Meeting call to order. In, accor in, accor in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public no. Meetings Act, the Board Secretary has forwarded notice of this meeting for advertising by having the date, time, and place thereof posted in the Secaucus Town Hall on the bulletin board of the Board of Education Administration Building, as well as notice being provided to the Bergen Record, Jersey Journal, and District website. Move to the flag. Roll call. Present. Mr. Bolognino? Present. Ms. Callie? Here. Ms. Eccles? Here. Mr. Lewis? Present. Mr. McStell? Here. Ms. O'Connell? Here. Mr. Patel? Here. Dr. Strober? Here. Regular minutes? I don't. I make a motion to approve the special meeting minutes of May 6, 2021, and the regular meeting minutes of May 20, 2021. Second. Roll call. Who seconded? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Bartletta? Yep. Mr. Bolognino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Uh, yes to May 6, then I have to abstain from May 20th. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Showcase? Good evening, everyone. We have uh, several showcases tonight, so I think we'll begin with uh, Teacher of the Year and Service uh, Professional of the Year. Um, I had the opportunity to work with all the teachers and service professionals who are being honored tonight. Um, I was able to see uh, firsthand the selfless dedication uh, to our students and to our school. Uh, most people typically see or observe what a teacher does from 7 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Uh, what most people don't see is what happens behind the scenes, the lessons, uh, that are being planned, the grades, uh, the grading of assignments, uh, email responses, the virtual extra help sessions that goes beyond the school day. I see it because uh, I live with one. Um, and I know that this is the norm for all of the teachers who are being recognized tonight. So thank you um, for all that you do. I have the pleasure of recognizing the Secaucus High School Teacher of the Year, uh, Mr. Omar Alasa. Mr. Alas has been a mathematics and engineering teacher and has been a tremendous asset at Secaucus High School for 13 years. It is an honor to work with such a dedicated, caring, and knowledgeable educator. He is a true professional in every sense of the word. His classes are fun and interactive, and he has a positive outlook that uh, has a, a, a great effect on his students, colleagues, and anyone who enters his classroom. Even during this very difficult year, he never wavered from his mission to help each and every one of his students. Mr. Alasa's dedication goes beyond the school environment. He is always willing to assist the students, staff, and school administration. This year, Mr. Alasa was a member of the pandemic response team, where he volunteered his time over the summer and after school hours to assist with the developing a safe reentry to school. Most recently, Mr. Alasa is working the academic intervention program, which meets on, sat on, which meets on Saturdays to assist uh, students in recovering credit. And Mr. Alasa assisted with the red carpet uh, prom event and chaperoned the senior prom. And these events do not happen without teachers like Mr. Alasa. In simplest terms, he is a gift to our school district. And I am personally grateful for the opportunity to work with such an exceptional educator. Mr. Lassa, if you would come up, we have a, a plaque and a certificate for you.
It's also my honor to recognize the Secaucus High School Educational Services Professional of the Year, Mrs. Kathy Gervasio. Mrs. Gervasio has been a school nurse in Secaucus High School uh, for 13 years, and she was nominated as the Educational Services Professional of the Year during the 2015-2016 school year, and it is only fitting to nominate her again for the outstanding, brave, and selfless service she provided not only to our school, but our entire community. When the COVID-19 pandemic forced Secaucus High School to move to a, a full virtual platform in March of last year, Mrs. Gervasio continued to work full-time as a school nurse, and she also volunteered to conduct COVID-19 tests at the, Hudson County, at the Hudson County's official coronavirus testing site. As a member of the Medical Reserve Corps, Mrs. Gervasio has co coordinated the testing of close to 20,000 COVID-19 patients. Mrs. Gervasio was one of the first to receive the Moderna coronavirus vaccine, and she continued her service by administering the vaccine to both the sea, uh, at the Sea Caucus and the Kearney site, where she administered close to 10,000 shots. She has spent many long days and countless hours on her feet, testing and vaccinating, all while juggling her full-time nurse responsibilities at Sea Caucus High School, her full-time grandparent responsibilities to her six wonderful grandchildren, and she never would have seen her husband, John, or Councilman Gervasio during this time had he not been by her side most days also administering the vaccine. So thank you, Mr. Gervasio, as well. In addition to the many daily hour, hours of volunteer work, Mrs. Gervasio took a lead role on the Secaucus High School Pandemic Response Team Committee. Her input, advice, and expertise kept our school community safe during in-person learning. Mrs. Gervasio is a proven Secaucus hero. It is my honor to work with her each and every day. Kathy Gervasio, would you please come up and receive your plaque? Good evening. The teacher that I get to honor here tonight is Mr. Sean Sonnet. He's not only one of the most inspiring educators I've ever met, he's also one of the kindest people I know. That was the unanimous feeling from both the administration and the teachers who I met with to pick this year's winner. Sean is always there to help, whether it's chaperoning an event like Camp Wampalani, or this year being one of the first teachers to reach out to me and ask if I needed help with the morning health screening. He has been an invaluable asset to the Secaucus schools for the past 26 years. Whenever I think about Sean's ability to instill a love of music into every single student privileged enough to walk into his classroom, the English teacher in me can't help but think of a line from Harry Potter. Hogwarts teacher Albus Dumbledore said, ah, music, wiping his eyes, a magic beyond all we do here. And that is really what it is. What he adds to the culture of Secaucus Middle School and what he is able to accomplish with such young musicians is the closest thing I've ever seen to magic in an educational setting. I'd like to share this one story with you before I ask Sean to come up. I have had so many proud moments as a principal, moments where I feel like the craziness of the day slows for just a minute, like in a movie, and I remember to soak it all in. In the midst of me being so thrilled to have gotten this job and becoming a principal, I was also watching my father battle, battle cancer and on one particular day, I walked into the pack and I heard this music being played and these lyrics being sung and it stopped me in my tracks. And I was far enough in the back that I don't think the students saw, but it brought tears to my eyes. And I heard the words from Shawn Mendes' song, It Isn't In My Blood. 
and it said, help me. It's like the walls are caving in. Sometimes I feel like giving up, but I just can't. It isn't in my blood. And the tears when I heard his students singing and his rock band playing weren't just for my dad. I also cried because it was just so beautiful. Music can do that to you. The kids were so talented, and I was so proud. And the world slowed for one of those moments because of him. Congratulations, Sean, for all that you do for our staff and students, for who you are as a person, for your second win in our district as Teacher of the Year, for the music, and for the magic in a year when we needed it most. Come on up, Sean. Good evening. Tonight's showcase is to honor the Educator of the Year and Service Professional of the Year. Normally, it would be announced at an assembly in front of the entire school, but this year we weren't able to do so. It is with great pleasure to honor Mrs. Lori Valente this evening as the Clarendon Educator of the Year. Mrs. Valente is a first grade teacher who I have had the pleasure of working with the last five years as an elementary supervisor and then as a building principal. I have witnessed firsthand what an amazing teacher she is. Mrs. Valente is a leader within our school and works collaboratively with staff in both elementary schools. Anyone you talk to who has had her as a teacher has the same feelings about her. She's incredible, energetic, passionate, dedicated, are some of the words I have heard countless times used by students and parents to describe her. When someone loves what they do, they never work a day in their life. She puts her heart and soul into her work, and it doesn't go unnoticed by her students, their families, her colleagues, and community members. She goes above and beyond every single day. We are fortunate to have such an amazing educator at Clarendon. She is and continues to be an inspiration to us all. Now, just in case, Ms. Valente, you do forget this, check out a video message from your virtual and in-person students. Hi, Ms. Valenti. I just wanted to thank you so much for welcoming me when I came from my old school, and thank you so much for teaching me how to read. Um, and one more thing, you're teacher of the year. I can't believe it. And that's so great. And congratulations, Mrs. Valenti. Congratulations, Ms. Valente, for getting the best teacher of the year award. You are the best teacher. Which one I have? I am proud of you. Ms. Valente, you're the best teacher ever because you answer questions we say. And you teach us good stuff. And congratulations. Dear Mrs. Dear Mrs. Valente, I am, I am very lucky to have a teacher like you. You are the best teacher in the world. Plus, I learn new things from you every day. You make lessons so fun. Thank you. Thank you for being my teacher. You're great. Ms. Valente, you rock. I think you made virtual learning so much fun. I'm really lucky to have you as my teacher. Congratulations, Ms. Valente, for getting the best teacher prize in, in the school. Thank you for the hard work and thank you for all the gifts. Hello, Ms. Valente. Thank you for being my teacher. Thank you for being my
Hi, thanks for being my teacher. I wish you the best luck. Thank you, Mrs. Valenti, for teaching us with so much love. It's easy learning with you. I love you so much. Rose and kisses. XOXO. I'm Ed Fuente, Julia, and I wear it so special because we learn from you and you teach us new skills. And that's why I think you're so very special. Love you. Hi, Mrs. Valenti. You are the best teacher in the whole entire world. You are very, very, very nice and caring. I love you so, 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 so much. It is my pleasure to also honor Mrs. Maria Raga this evening as the Educational Service Provider of the Year for Clarendon School. Mrs. Raga truly is unlike anyone I've ever met. She has a heart of gold. She demonstrates kindness, generosity, and dedication to her students. Mrs. Raga is always willing to go above and beyond to help and support her students in every way possible. She is incredible. Mrs. Raga is an invaluable resource to our school and to our district. She is truly amazing and impacts the lives of our students every day. As a committee, we couldn't think of a better person to give this award to this year. She truly embodies every quality that represents the meaning of an educational service provider of the year. You mean so much to all of us, and your students have a special message for you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waga, for everything you do. Congratulations. Ms. Waga, you're the best teacher in the world. Thank you, Ms. Waga, for everything, for being there for me. Thank you for helping me for my work, Ms. Waga. Mrs. Waga, you are the best teacher, caring, love, Thank you for helping me do all of work on my assignments. And I love you, Mrs. Raga. Mrs. Raga, I think you have been a great teacher all this year, more likely the whole year, or maybe the whole, every year. And I feel like you've done a great job in teaching us something and working very hard. And all I wanted to say was thank you. Thank you so much for helping us and caring for us. And congrats on winning the award. We love you, Ms. Raka, and hope on seeing you again in the future. Mrs. Raka is very caring, loving, and working. Ms. Raka, you're very helpful and you're really nice. And you always help me. Again, it is with great admiration and pleasure to honor Mrs. Raga as the Educational Services Professional of the Year for Clarendon School. Come on up.
never easy to follow a group of first graders. Uh, if I could, before I begin, uh, echo something that Mr. Vigiani started with. I've had the opportunity and pleasure of working with everybody that's honored tonight. It's truly an amazing group. But now on to Huber Street. The Huber Street School Teacher of the Year is Mrs. Eilish Vigiani. It's not always easy to quantify or explain how or why a teacher is so good. It's like trying to describe why a song is so great or a sunset so beautiful. I was struggling to come up with the right words to talk about our Teacher of the Year, so I reached out for help. The following are testimonials from parents whose children have been in Mrs. Vigiani's class. <clears throat> One family, Mrs. Vigiani is an amazing teacher. This year has been difficult and very different for all of us, but when you see your child still learning and flourishing through all of this, it gives you so much hope. Another mom, Mrs. Vigiani is the best thing that happened to my daughter. She continued, we are beyond grateful for Mrs. Vigiani. She has made such a great impact on my daughter and brought out her confidence in ways I could never thank her enough for. By far, Mrs. Vigiani is one of the most caring, encouraging, and dedicated teachers. Another mom, Mrs. Vigiani is caring, loving, respectful, and above all, treats all of her students as if they were her own. Another family, Mrs. Vigiani has demonstrated not only that she's an exceptional educator, but an exceptional human being. One mom, Mrs. Vigiani has a gift of keeping her students engaged and eager to learn. Her hard work and dedication to her craft is very admirable. She comes to work every day with so much enthusiasm and can handle anything thrown her way. And then after observing Mrs. Vigiani with her students via Google Classroom, said, Mrs. Vigiani is my spirit animal. Lastly, one parent, it's hard to find the words to express what kind of teacher Mrs. Vigiani truly is. Mrs. Vigiani goes above and beyond to make sure every student knows that they are respected and loved. She creates a level of trust that makes the classroom culture like a family. She has high expectations for each student and makes sure they know they have the ability to do great things. She celebrates students' differences while trying to also meet those same unique needs as an educator. Her accessibility, her warmth, and her overall enthusiasm are examples of how much she cares for each child who walks through her door. Mrs. Vigiani did not let the distance of being virtual change the community that they built in her classroom. Our family will forever be grateful for the hard work and dedication she gave to our daughter that they can never repay. You see, great teachers don't just educate. They build, they create, they adapt, they lead, they love, they inspire, they become part of the family, Great teachers change people's lives. Mrs. Vigiani changes people's lives. It is now my true honor to introduce the 2021 Uber Street School Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Eilish Vigiani. Good evening again, everyone. Now this, uh, we have about four showcases tonight. 
I'm here to, uh, we have uh, Mrs. Jimenez and um, the uh, Secaucus High School Art Club are here. Um, they uh, were recently voted runner-up in the Vans Custom Culture Contest. Um, the Secaucus High School Art Club was one of five nationwide finalists in the competition that required students to cu customize shoes around specific themes. The two themes included hometown pride and unity. Recently, Mrs. Jimenez and her students were presented with a $15,000 check from Vans for resources to enhance our art department. Um, not a bad first year for Mrs. Jimenez. Um, and and uh, congratulations to her and our students. Um, as they're here tonight. They also brought um, the $15,000 uh, sneakers with them so for, for everyone to see. They're, a size, they're my size, they're a size 10. I don't know if they match the suit though. Congratulations to Harveen Jamat, Lili Liliana Hopkins, Christy Portillo, Emily Torres, Amy Torres, and Destiny Salinas. This year, Secaucus Middle and High School had their first hybrid STEM fair. Students in middle and high school complete, com completed science and engineering projects that were scored by various judges in STEM fields. The following are this year's winners. When your name is called, please come up to receive your award and remain up here for a picture. From Secaucus Middle School, Gold, Sarah Velaz, Zoe Donaldson, and Ava Diadetta, Florian Arnato, Dominic Brescia, and Abigail Brescia. Silver medal, Arsh Kodwani, Rhea Bardwaj, Shriya Inamdar, Derek Su, and Bika Rao. Bronze medal, Argya Trivedi, Arman Shah, Jasmine Bradley, Justin White, Naya Barvad, Kiran Pisolkar, Lucas Lynn, Isabella Pablos, and Amea Athali. Now from Secaucus High School, gold medal, Nija Agarwal. Silver medal, Audrey Yoon.
and Devani Gandhi. And bronze medal, Pooja Parikh. For our Hudson County STEM Showcase winners, we have for silver, silver medal, grade seven, and Broadcom Masters nominee, Simran Batla. And for silver medal high school computer science, Ayush Agarwal. Congratulations, everyone. That concludes the showcase. Anybody that would like to leave can do so now, or you're welcome to stay. <laughs> Back again. <laughs> I promise this is it. That's okay. Good evening, Christine Candela, Principal of Sea Caucus Middle School. Our National Junior Honor Society and Alpha Ceremony last week was a beautiful event. The current members welcomed in new members and carried on the tradition of lighting a candle and celebrating the pillars of scholarship, leadership, service, character, and citizenship. I would like to thank the advisors, Mrs. Debbie Damone and Mrs. Kritika Chopra for organizing the event. The middle and high school outdoor concert couldn't have been more perfect. Last night we welcomed families to the front of the pack where they set up lawn chairs and enjoyed a night showcasing the musical talents of Mr. Sonnet and his sixth, seventh, and eighth grade bands. It was a night to celebrate our students and also a return to a sense of normalcy and one of the events that we look forward to at the end of every year. The Sea Caucus Middle School Character Club in conjunction with Sea Caucus Cares and the Hygiene Project recently held a drive to benefit the Hoboken Shelter. Along with advisors Pat Kikuchi and Mr. Donald Somerset, students were responsible for setting up and collecting goods, ranging from hygiene products to gloves and socks, to benefit the members of the local community shelter. 50 personal hygiene bags were able to be made from their efforts, and we are very proud of them. 
I would be remiss to not mention my school nurse, Allison Roa. Allison and Kathy made their profession in this district so proud this year. Allison was with me every morning doing temperature checks. When she wasn't at the school, she was volunteering her time vaccinating the residents of Sea Caucus. She couldn't be here tonight, but I want to celebrate her anyway for the wonderful nurse and person that she is. We have many families already signed up for our middle school orientation tours that will begin the week of June 28th. Our students are very excited for Monday's field day where there will be a DJ, yearbook signing, and a visit from Mr. Frosty. Softy, sorry. Our graduation ceremony will be on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. on the football field. And last but not least, as it is currently happening right now, our eighth graders are enjoying their dinner dance at the town pool, sponsored by the PTO. I'm going to head back over there. I want to congratulate all the teachers of the year and service professionals. Thank all of you. Have a great rest of the evening, and have a wonderful summer. Good evening, I'm Rob Valenti, principal of Uber Street School. As you might be aware, the end of the school year can be quite busy. On June 7th, our PTA hosted the annual fifth grade dinner. Between the PTA and Mayor Mike, along with the town council, they threw a great party for our students. On June 11th, our students participated in the torch run for Special Olympics with the Sea Caucus Police Department. This past Monday, June 14th, we hosted the fifth grade promotion ceremony at the Arthur F. Couch Performing Arts Center. There are far too many people to thank right now for making the night as special as it was, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Kim Pascarello, Colleen Mason, Jamie Vigiano, Matt Miller, AJ Tobia, and Devin Paredes for all their hard work behind the scenes. The following night, our fifth graders were able to celebrate with the Crosstown classmates at the fifth grade pool party. Thank you to Pam Aluzzi and uh, Rislin Campo for organizing that fun event. Oscar Gongora produced a virtual spring concert that you can view on YouTube, and it was amazing. With just over a week to go, we still have some more events on our calendar. On Monday, my Huber Bears will be traveling across Patterson Plank Road to meet up with the Bees for a track meet at Clarendon School. Special thanks to Brittany Yanetti and Crystal Rodriguez for organizing this new field day. Friday, June 25th, is the final day of school. We will be clapping out our fifth graders at 11.30. Being clapped out along with them will be our Huber Street School retirees. Claire Costello, Judy Jager, Faith Rennie, Anna Critelli, Liz Paredes, and Grace Ann Hertuck. Then, it's on to summer. Thank you and have a great night. Good evening, I'm Dr. Danielle Garzon, principal of Clarendon School. On June 4th, the Clarendon PTA hosted their annual fifth grade family dinner. Families enjoyed an evening of good food, great company, laughter, and listened to poems read by their children. Thank you to the incredible PTA and Mayor Ganelli for all the games and activities they prepared for them. It was a successful night. June 11th was also the annual torch run. The Sequaucus Public School District in conduct conjunction with the Sequaucus Police Department, along with more than 3,000 officers throughout the state of New Jersey, took to the streets of the town of Sequaucus to help carry the flame of hope to the Special Olympics New Jersey Summer Games. Thank you all to, thank you to all who participated. June 15th was the Clarendon fifth grade promotion ceremony at the PAC. Families enjoyed an evening filled with a video from the fifth graders giving their parents advice as they prepare for middle school. Thank you to the IT department, the fifth grade team, Ms. Brianna Melendez, Mrs. Santiniello, Ms. Voli, and the Clarendon staff who worked together to make this event a success. The fifth grade track meet will be held on June 21st at Clarendon School. The students of Huber and Clarendon will compete in various events. Clarendon, Clarendon School a few years back had come home with a win, so let's see if we're going to have a win this year. Thank you to Mrs. Rodriguez and Ms. Yanetti for organizing this wonderful event. June 25th is the fifth grade clap out. Fifth grade students will be walking around the inside of our school and out through the main entrance as all staff, students, and their families cheer and send best wishes to the future middle schoolers. Before I end this evening, I would like to thank our families again for your support and patience throughout the year. We made it. 
We worked as a team to ensure the success of our students. To our students, you are amazing. You have done an incredible job this school year, and I am so proud of you. My greatest appreciation this year has been working with the staff that continues to demonstrate hard work and dedication. They are unbelievable. They support each other daily, go above and beyond for our students, and show their appreciation for one another each day. I can't thank you enough for everything you do. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful summer. Good evening again, everyone. Steve Ujani, principal of Seacaucus High School. Should be my last time at the podium tonight. On June 9th, uh, many seniors attended the annual awards ceremony with their family members. It was wonderful to see so many of our students get recognized with scholarship money, which was over $70,000 and department awards. Uh, we are extremely grateful to be part of a community with such generous organizations willing to honor and support our students. A special thank you to our guidance counselor, Mrs. Kate Susano, um, this is a huge undertaking, this event, and it takes at least six months to plan, so a big thank you to her. It, uh, it's been wonderful uh, for our school community to come together um, and have these traditional uh, end-of-year events. Alongside that, our seniors also attended their senior prom. Uh, that happened on the following night at the Excelsior in Saddlebrook, and the traditional red carpet event, which took place on the football field this year. Another special thank you to Assistant Principal uh, Mrs. Wargaki and class advisors, Mrs. Kim, Mr. Light, and the many, many staff chaperones for making this uh, very special night for our students. On uh, the following day, on June 11th, we had about 120 middle school and high school students receive their second Pfizer vaccine at Secaucus High School, thanks to um, Town Administrator Gary Jeffess, uh, Mayor Mike Canelli, and the Town Council. Of course, Kathy Gervasio, uh, John Gervasio, and Allison Rowe were administering the shots. Uh, last night, we had a wonderful uh, band concert take place right outside our packed doors. It was a beautiful uh, evening. They had to, uh, they had, uh, it was a bit windy, so the sheet music and uh, a few music stands were, were flying around. But other than that, it was a gorgeous evening. Uh, today, our juniors had a pool day at, uh, at the Secaucus Swim Center, and tomorrow, uh, the seniors will have the same event. On Monday, the 21st, uh, is our uh, Senior Athletic Awards Night. Um, that will take place on the football field. On June 22nd, we are having our uh, traditional clap out at both elementary schools. On June 23rd is uh, graduation practice in the morning and later that evening at 7.30, uh, we will honor the graduating class of 2021. Um, seniors uh, have been picking up their caps and gowns this week uh, and Chromebook collection will begin the week of June 25th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Congratulations to the boys' tennis team. Um, they are the NJIC Meadowlands Division Champions with an overall record of 11 uh, wins and two losses and division record of 11 wins and one loss. Thank you. Anyone else? Superintendent's report. No correspondence. All right, good evening. Um, first, I would like to congratulate our students who have been acknowledged this evening for their hard work and achievements during this year's STEM fair. Next, I would like to congratulate our teachers and service providers of the year. The last year has proven to be a difficult one and one that has required everyone to learn in a new environment in order for our students to succeed. You have proven to go above and beyond, and your dedication to our district is incredible. Thank you for your service and congratulations on this well-deserved honor. I would like to take a minute to thank and congratulate Dr. Garzon and Mr. Valente this evening in hosting two absolutely beautiful fifth grade promotion ceremonies. Not only was it exciting to be part of the promotion ceremony, which we have not seen since June of 2019, but it was great to see the students all together with their families, celebrating all their accomplishments in elementary schools. To, to both of you and your staff, job well done. It was really beautiful. <clears throat> also, on behalf of myself, Grace Yo, and the Board of Education, I would like to personally thank Ms. Kathy Gervasio and Ms. Allison Roa for their dedication to our district and our community 
as they selfishly spent countless hours providing vaccines to our staff, students, and community members. You both are true heroes in my eyes and have been key in keeping our community safe. Words can truly not express the gratitude that this entire community has. Lastly, I am so happy to share with everyone that as we can see, the COVID-19 pandemic is slowing down at a rate which will hopefully allow us to have, <clears throat> to have this be a thing of the past in the next few months. I know that many are anxious for our staff and students to not wear masks. Myself as well, am looking forward to the days of complete normalcy. But please know that our governor and the Department of Education are continuing to require masks and because our schools are air conditioned and therefore not covered by the exception cited by our governor of excessive heat, we must continue at this time to wear masks and require them inside school buildings at this time. As we are already planning for September, we hope that COVID orders will be exhausted and we can make further changes when we welcome our staff and students back into the buildings in September. As always, I would like to continually thank our Board of Education and our mayor for working with us as we, as we navigate our district during these times. Thank you. Um, this evening, we had three HIV investigations. One was confirmed as HIV and two were not. I need a motion. bullying findings as reported by the superintendent. They are available at the administrative office for review. Second. Roll call. Yes. Ms. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strobert? Yes. Is this report? Yes, tonight I do have a report. Tonight, under the finance agenda, we are adding resolution R8.30 for approval to enter into a contract with Design Management and Consulting, LLC, also doing business as Empanada Guy Catering for catering services for Secaucus High School at 11 Millridge Road on Tuesday, 622. 21 from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also added to this, this agenda is the section entitled New Business. This is done once a year at every June meeting. The board approves these 31 resolutions, which enables the district to operate within the, within the DOE regulations. Thank you. Okay, anything on the agenda? Governance Committee. I make a motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve and adopt resolution R1.01 with R1.34 and motion M1.01 as described below. Second. Second. Discussion? There are none. Roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Policy? I'd like to make a recommendation to accept the superintendent's motion. Uh, Recommendation to approve and adopt resolution R2.01 through R2.02 as described below for the following. Second. Discussion. There are none. Roll call. Mr. Bartletta? No to R2.01 and yes to R2.02. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strobert? Yes. Shared services? None. 
Legislation on Education Committee. I would like to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve and adopt resolutions R5.01 through R5.02 as described below of the following. Second. Discussion. And then roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Athletics, none. Technology, none. Operations? I would like to make a motion to accept. Uh, I would like to make a motion of the Business Training Board Secretary to approve and adopt the resolutions R8.01 through R8.30 as described below. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Safety, security, buildings, and grounds. I would like to make a motion, uh, recommendation of the business, business to the Business Administrative Board Secretary to approve and adopt resolutions R9.01 and R9.02 as described below. Second. Discussion? And none. Roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Eck Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Okay. I need someone to... I'd like to make a motion uh, to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and board administrator, board secretary, to approve and adopt resolutions R2021.01 through R2021.31 for school year 2021-22, as described below. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Bartletta? Yes. Mr. Bolanino? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Ms. Eccles? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McStow? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Dr. Strober? Yes. Public forum? Good evening. I'm the attorney. Uh, I'm Stephen Fogarty, the attorney for the Secaucus School District. Uh, this meeting is open to the public for the purpose of addressing any subject matter that is pertinent to and or directly related to the operation of the Secaucus Public School District. Residents wishing to speak on such items must sign the register provided for this purpose and are required to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments are limited to five minutes per person. The board may or may not respond to issues raised by members of the public at the time they are raised, but will provide a response if and when appropriate. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals. Please note that the board will not respond to comments regarding students or board employees in light of the privacy rights held by those individuals. Moreover, the board discourages comments about such individuals and will not be responsible for such comments. Members of the public who choose to speak during this public session should carefully consider their comments since they could be held personally liable for any statements they make. Finally, please note that in accordance with district policy number 1100, the board will not officially comment or respond to any matter mentioned unless it can confirm that the matter has first been brought to the attention of the appropriate school administration in an attempt to resolve the issue. Your cooperation is appreciated. Okay. If I pronounce anybody's name wrong, please, I apologize. Uh, Ruby Kish. Good evening. My name is Ruby Kish and I reside at 41 Creekside Court. I want to start by congratulating the students that got honored today and the teachers especially. My son had the privilege and honor of having Miss Vigiani in second grade and she truly, truly did change his life for the better. She saw the good in him when very few people could and she made him see the good in himself. I will be forever grateful for her, so I just wanted to say that. But my remarks today are actually directed at the Board of Education members. 
So I, along with other parents, throughout this awful school year, have attended these Board of Ed meetings. Parents have stood where I've stood, or they've logged on to meetings from their living rooms across town via Zoom and expressed their frustration with how the school district has handled the pandemic. Parents have asked questions, they've offered solutions, they've provided well-researched and well-thought-out advice on how the district could respond to the challenges that our students faced this very difficult year. For many of us, including myself, the experience of speaking at these board meetings has been extremely frustrating. There's very little acknowledgement that we've even spoken. There's no follow-up. And worst of all, there's never any explanation for the policies that we come here to question. I understand that there are significant limitations, legal limitations, for the ability of the board to respond to us at these official meetings. However, these limitations do not absolve any member of the Board of Education from engaging with the community that elected them, from listening to the community and speaking with the community. The New Jersey School Boards Association, they have a publication entitled Fundamentals of School Board Membership and it describes board members as communicators. It says, and I quote, board members provide two-way communication between the community and the school district by informing the public about the schools, promoting parents' presence in schools, and working to secure public support for school and district goals. The manual also lists several factors that make effective board members, and those include, and again, I'm quoting, Board members know how to foster community involvement. Board members can identify how they sought out ways to connect with and listen to the community. Board members express pride in their community and in their efforts to involve parents. My question to each of you tonight, can you identify ways you sought out to connect with and listen to the community? Because I will tell you right now, that sitting as you are today at these board meetings is not connecting with the community. Talking to your friends and your social network is not connecting with the community. Going on Facebook and social media to understand what's happening in our schools is not adequately connecting with our community. Connecting with the community requires outreach. It requires outreach to parents that are not represented by those of us who feel comfortable enough to attend these meetings and to speak at these meetings. It requires outreach to diverse populations, to parents of different socioeconomic and ethnic backgrounds. I want to quote again from the New Jersey School Board Association. Board members are community representatives. That means representing the entire community not just the area in which they live or their particular supporters. Board members have a responsibility to listen to all citizens. Furthermore, connection is not just hearing our concerns about our children. It requires each of you to explain how you are working to address those concerns, not as a board, as an entity, but as an individual that was elected to serve on the board. And yes, you will get concerns raised that are not appropriate to be addressed at the Board of Education level. You will get parents raising concerns that need to be addressed at the classroom level, the school level, or even at the superintendent level. And when that happens, simply direct the parent to the appropriate person to speak with and move on to the next issue. I know this is not the way the board operates. I know some of you thought you might join the board and have this type of outreach that I'm talking about, but we're quickly told this is not how we do things, there are limitations, there are rules. I am here to tell you today that the old way of doing things is just not working. It's not working for parents and it's not working for students. For parents, we feel shut out. We feel like we lack the representation that the Board of Education is supposed to provide. And for students, the research shows that when parents are involved, when parents are included, schools are strengthened. So this negatively affects our students as well. 
excuse me, Ms. Kish, your time is up. Okay, I'm almost done. I believe that each of you cares enormously for our schools. The job you do is very difficult, challenging, and time-consuming, and yet you do it unpaid and unappreciated. I want to thank you all for your service. I genuinely do. I'm just asking that you please do the job in a way that best serves our population. Our community is entitled to have board members that meet the minimum standards of the New Jersey School Board Association. Thank you. Thank have you. a good evening. Daniela Piccioni. Good evening, I'm Danielle Vecchione of 1135 Farm Road. I would like to thank Ruby Kish for her remarks. It's not easy to come up here and speak. Um, and I, su I support her remarks. Um, I am also here to inquire about five full days with lunch for all students for September. So I realize that's the plan uh, to return to full time, but I just, I'm, I just don't know how can we be certain that there won't be any last minute changes. Um, we don't want any more surprises. I would also like to voice my opinion about making masks optional for the students. Um, I feel it's a parent's right to choose what they deem is safe for their own child. So um, I just think we should allow the children to breathe more easily and share their smiles with their friends again. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Daniela Miller. Good evening, everyone. My name is Danielle Miller. I reside at 171 Meadow Lane. Uh, I also am here to support, you know, the district parents, and I agree totally with what Ruby said and Danielle said as well. Um, I also want to thank all the wonderful teachers and staff in the district, um, especially in Uber Street, for getting us through a really unique year. Um, I was disappointed when you guys made a decision to not open up, you know, for five full days. Uh, I'm not sure why that was. I know that in other districts in Bergen County, which is neighboring, they did make a decision over the past couple of weeks and they were able to open up full time. And I think it was a good kind of test run for September. And I just think the prolonged impact of these shortened schedules on the children can be devastating. Science has brought us a long way and give us a, given us a clear understanding of how to make our schools safe. And I hope that the board really considers that for September and does the right thing. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Monica Berkish. Good evening, everyone. Monica Burkus, 19 Schmidt's Place. Many of you here have heard from me over the last couple of weeks, almost all of you for that matter. For those who responded, Superintendent Montesano and Principal Candela, who I'm happy she's enjoying the eighth grade graduation right now, the pool party. While we're at odds of the subject of masking and the mandates that I feel are unfair and not right for our kids, I acknowledge and appreciate the communication and I'd like to speak further on the subject in greater detail, uh, and I plan to follow up in the upcoming days. To the elected members of this board, I sent each of you an email this week, and I expressed some things in that email that I've said here before you. The opinion chaos surrounding everything that's gone on through this pandemic, and what science was guiding our decisions and your decisions. I've provided factual data regarding the decline in emotional and mental health in our kids. I spoke about the suffering of my own two kids in addition to the facts that mental 
health is on the decline and suicides and other terrible things are rising. Yet, so many other people said the same thing. And after I spoke numerous times and tried to reach out by email, thinking that might be more appropriate or more comfortable, I heard nothing. So to echo a little bit of what Ruby's saying, your silence is not only deafening, it's maddening to me. It really is. We should be hearing your beliefs and your opinions as the elected gateways to our community of schools. And since my latest email to you went unresponded, I just wanna outline a few things to the school community in attendance here or watching at home, a small excerpt from it. But before I do, let me just say this. It's my own fault that I put blind faith in some of the leadership here and just followed along. Um, I'm sad to say it, I was admittedly sleeping uh, for a while. Uh, from Board of Ed elections straight up to the head of my state. I never learned about your views. I spe spent very little time vetting candidates. I never figured out if your views aligned with mine. And in fairness, maybe they do. I don't know. I, I, I don't know any different. I made some poor and uninformed decisions in the voting booth based, based prob probably on assumptions. And again, sad to say, on personalities and popularity. And that's my fault, and I own that, but not anymore. We need to end man mask mandates in our schools and have a full and complete return to normal in September. No masks, no social distancing, no temperature checks, no plexiglass dividers, and no contact tracing. Return to regular class sizes and reinstate lockers and lunchrooms and all extracurricular activities. This has gone on long enough and our kids' spirit will not take any longer of it if it happens again. I'm looking for you on the board and in my district to be leaders, not followers. Leaders that'll go against the grain and stand up for these kids' overall wellness. Not just listen to propaganda over a statistically altered virus. I am looking for brave fighters for my kids as I try myself to be brave for them by being here tonight. I had hoped our district would, with an 80% vaccination rate touted as the highest in Hudson County would have led the charge in returning our kids to normal sooner, not throw our hands up and say, well, there's nothing we can do, we're following guidance. I still can't believe that we never return to a full day, especially if, even if we only provided it to the special needs kids. I just don't understand why we couldn't figure it out. You, the members of this board, have a fiduciary duty to the students to make sure that they're protected, supported, and educated. You are responsible for the oversight of our children under your direct care. I will remind you that the unelected CDC and health department are not. I will also remind you about the oath you took when you petitioned for this elected position, which is you will support the United States Constitution and will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Mandates are not law. No governor makes laws, our legislators do. The CDC does not make laws, they make recommendations. All face masks covering a nose and a mouth inhibit health, especially in developing children. They should have been optional from the beginning for our kids. And yes, that's based on science. I'll close with two last comments, and the first one will be for you guys on the board. Provide an opinion to the community in on all this. Let the community know one thought, one belief, even a glimpse at what your position is regarding what I've covered tonight. Provide an ounce of transparency so that we know where you're coming from. That's why we elected you. There are three seats up on the board this, this election. Choose to comment or not comment wisely. And the last and second and last comment is for my kids. Watching home the live stream.
who I didn't have attend because they shouldn't wear a face mask for a second longer than they're already forced to. And that message is to tell them that I am here tonight because I need them to know that I did not stay silent and I'm fighting for them because they can't do it for themselves right now. But one day, they will be able to. And I hope they remember that it starts in your own room by making your own bed as I'm here in my own community and in their school. Thank you. Thank you. Manuela Katz. Good evening. My name is Manuela Kratz, and my address is 5 Elizabeth Court. I'm here tonight to demand action from this board. Emails go unanswered, and questions asked at these meetings are ignored. You have to make masks optional for our teachers and our students. It is obvious that children have not received the free appropriate education they're entitled to, because if they had, there would be no need for summer academy. Teachers cannot properly teach while muzzled, and students cannot learn if they cannot be seen. We all know 70% of our communication is nonverbal. A smile can speak volumes to a child. And a teacher, and vice versa, how is a teacher supposed to assess the emotional state of a child if they can't see them? Masks have shown to be a breeding ground for pathogens and bacteria, in addition to being psychologically and emotionally damaging to children. American, the American Rescue Plan has allocated funds for districts. Do these funds have strings attached? Is the funding contingent on these prolonged experiments with the masks? Is the $3 million that the state is planning to give us the price tag on our children? Some may say that masks are for safety. Children have a zero infection fatality rate. Is there a better number than zero? When did the responsibility of making an adult feel safe fall on the shoulders of a child? It's always been and always will be the adult's duty to protect the child. If an adult has chosen to self-protect, they've had plenty of opportunity to do so. I challenge anyone to produce any evidence that children pose a direct risk to anyone's health. If this district cannot lead in this endeavor, maybe then you can follow the many other districts which have made masks optional for next school year, regardless of the air conditioning available in their buildings. I know elections will be held this year for three seats. Your actions, or lack thereof, will certainly be remembered when it comes time to cast my vote. And for every person that speaks here, there are at least 10 who feel the same, who share the same perspective, but are too afraid to come forward. Please make masks optional next school year. And I will close with this quote from Voltaire. Those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Thank you. Thank you. George Krieger. George Krieger, 719 John Street. Now, it looks like some people are going to be wearing masks for the rest of their lives. I'm not one of them, and neither is my kid. I'm also not getting vaccinated because I don't need it, and neither is my kid because he doesn't need it. You know what he does need is to be back in school full time, okay? I do not have to stand up here and explain to you that masks are nonsense, lockdowns are more harmful than anything, they'll do way more harm than good, social distancing is nonsense. I don't have to explain that to you. 
the burden of proof is on the state. You have to prove to me that masks do anything. Prove to me that masks stop anyone from catching corona. None of you can prove that because the proof doesn't exist. My kid will not be wearing a mask in September. If you try to put one on him, I will have to pull him out of school and put him in Catholic school, move to a town that's not doing this nonsense, whatever I have to do. But this has to end. Thank you. Thank you. Gina Krieger. Gina Krieger, 719 John Street. I feel like a lot of these parents already have covered a lot of what I wanted to say already. Um, I'm here to address a few things. My son is six years old and goes to Clarendon School. I can't understand why the little ones are not being acknowledged for graduating kindergarten. Fifth, eighth, twelfth have all excuse me, have all had graduation ceremonies, parties, proms, etc., as they deserve to. My nieces and nephews also are part of it. It made me happy. But so do our kindergartners. This year has been the most challenging, especially for our little ones. They have had to adjust to learning in school with masks on and then virtually back in the class with masks on. They have missed out on pre-K graduation due to COVID uh, happening, which was understandable. But then not, them not having an actual play or moving up ceremony is not. They deserve it. They deserve to be celebrated and acknowledged for all they've accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Daya? Good evening, everyone. My name is Daria Gerasimenko, and I live on 16 Mutilat Lane. And I have uh, two kids in school, eight years old and 10 years old. And they, my subject is the same as previous speakers make uh, masks optional. And for parents who choose so, they can still put them on the kids, indoor, outdoor, playground, have it 24 hours on. Because I see it. In the excessive heat, they still have it on. So let them have this choice. Uh, my kids were happy to return to school in September. And when it closed down, they were sad. And uh, when the school opened up again, they were back and happy, and I let them go. Even I don't want them to, having their face covered. And they also participate in all the recreation sports in town, multiple sports, including wrestling. And they wrestle without a face covering and being on top of each other. And also they travel to different towns, participate in sports, starting as soon as everything opened up in September. None of the teammates, both of my kids, got sick, as well as their parents. So my four-year-old go and go to school in September, and I wish she doesn't have to cover her face. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any board comments? Uh, yes, I, um, I just want to uh, congratulate all the teachers of the year, ESPs of the year, for all their hard work and uh, everything that they do for the kids. Um, all the showcase winners, uh, congratulations. The retirees, enjoy. Faith, have many, <laughs> many, many years of uh, enjoyable retirement. 
and I wish you all the best. I'd like to echo Joe's sentiments with the retirees, um, Teacher of the Year, all the student winners, uh, and thank you all for coming and speaking tonight. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and giving their, their uh, thoughts and opinions. Um, I think it goes without saying that we're all hoping that September returns to normal, and that's our plan, provided there's no monkey wrenches thrown in between now and September, where well, we hope to be back to normal. Um, but we do hear you. It's not that your requests and, and ideas don't go noticed. They do. Um, Ruby, I think that you might see some changes coming. Thank you for speaking. Um, I'll just uh, go back and say congratulations to the two elementaries for nice ceremonies that you had the other night. And um, in addition to the teachers of the year, I would like to also say that I like to pronounce that every teacher this year under circumstances was a teacher of the year. And I have to make a public announcement that um, as long as we're under mandate of masks being worn in schools, any person on school property must adhere to this mandate by wearing a mask while on school property. So in the future, we ask you to please cooperate with the mandate that's imposed on us. With that, I ask a motion to, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So be it.